If you're a driven, active person who wants to reach and pursue a higher quality life with some ambition, then guess what? This podcast is for you. This is the Driven Athlete Podcast. What's up, y'all? It's your man, Dr. Kyle. We got a really cool guest with us, Aaron Murphy from One Fitness, the the legend. We're glad to have you on. So thank you for coming in. Thank you. Share some of your insights and some of your knowledge bombs and stuff. Um, so tell everybody again, right? Clarify where you're at, what you do, um, and your location. Um, I'm Aaron Murphy. I am a personal trainer at One Fitness. We are downtown. Uh, a little bit outside of downtown. We're on Belvedere and Dixie. We're a private personal training gym. We also offer hit classes and soon to be expanding into a membership style gym. Yeah. You're just growing. Yeah. We're growing. And you get, you work with, we've had Taylor Snook on here. Yeah. You guys work closely together, correct? Yes. Okay. So same facility you guys are at. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys are personal at this point, personal training only. Yes. So you work one-on-one with clients. Yes. Do you guys, do you also like walk clients through I would imagine other aspects of their life too for mm. health and wellness, right? Yeah. Um, with your wealthy Aaron yeah. uh, uh, platform, right? Yeah. Um, your Instagram is wealthy Aaron. Is yes. That okay. Wealthy Aaron. God, that's that's I like that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, other aspects like nutrition, mm-hmm. other lifestyle habits, stuff too, sleep. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So we kind of offer a lot of different concierge services within One Fitness. One of them being that we partner with people like you guys and local businesses in the area so that we can provide the best services to our clients. Obviously, we're a gym, so we only see people for a couple hours a week, but there's more to lifestyle habits than that. Right. Um, So a couple of our trainers are certified in different things like yoga, Pilates, different style of training other than strength training. Um, Myself, I have my master's in nutrition, so I help do nutrition coaching for some of our clients. Um, I just started a meal prep and delivery service. Oh, really? For the Palm Beach area, yes. We'll get into that. Yeah, so um, I partnered up with a chef. I am not the chef, so let's- (laughs) Is that your home, in your kitchen at home? Yeah, let's let's put that out there. I, I partnered with a phenomenal chef. So I am not the chef, but I go through and we solidify the menus based on macronutrient goals. Um, a lot of our meals are really high in protein because that's kind of the big, you know, missing piece for a lot yeah, of people. Building block. Um, sure. So that's a piece to our puzzle. We partner with massage therapists. We partner with, um, you know, different uh, different businesses and offer different amenities for like corporate wellness. Right. So we're kind of creating this concierge wellness network. Yeah, yeah it's totally. great. Um, I mean, we've definitely had a good relationship, but we have a lot of very like-minded philosophies, I feel like, Mm -hmm. and clientele that we can pass back and forth to help, I mean, to help people, right? To like elevate their life and improve their quality of life for sure. And if people are battling like neck pain or shoulder issues and like this thing's been lingering forever and it's affecting my ability to train, Mm -hmm. it's like, cool, go see our guys and girls at Athlete Restoration Co. PT and we'll get you back to 100%. Yeah, and I think that's the the missing piece that a lot of places have because we can put you through a really hard workout and you know a lot of people are fixated on did I sweat enough and did I burn enough calories but we kind of like really hone in on like the expertise and saying like hey if you're not hitting the goals that you want there's probably a missing piece to your program here's 10 different resources that we have and people we trust that you can go ahead and like figure this out right yeah totally um and I would imagine like well, but the clients that we see, a lot of very like very similar clientele, right? Like we said, um, a lot of them when they come see us, they're usually at the point where they're like, "Yeah, I want to exercise. Cool. I want to be able to lose weight, feel good, feel confident, better physique, feel stronger and better. Mm-hmm. Totally. But I just want to be out of pain at this point. Yeah. Like I just don't want to hurt. Yeah. Right. It's like cool. Exercise will help that for sure. Yeah. We just got to fix some compensation patterns maybe in the meantime, you mm-hmm. know, and expose some of those things and investigate and treat it appropriately so you can get back to like training hardcore. Yeah. And then like for sure, you don't have to exercise to death yeah. every workout. Yeah. And there's like moving and grooving sometimes is, is good. Yeah. Right. I don't want to deter that from somebody not working out or doing something just because yeah. I'm like, well, I can't go all in today. Yeah. You know? I think it's also like teaching them like what the actual threshold that they need is. And like, you know, a lot of people are going to come in and, and I always say like fitness and health and wellness is kind of like a vulnerable subject for a lot of people. Oh, 100%. So yeah. you're, you're getting them like we, we work with a lot of like very successful people, like within business and high level CEOs, we work with people who are, like have made it yeah. in their job and they're coming in and they're asking you for help. And it's usually a vulnerable subject. Cause you're now talking to them about like, Hey, I'm going to get real with you. 
you need to change some lifestyle habits in order to achieve these things you want right. to want to achieve. So you have to create that trust and that relationship. And so a lot of people come in with like their guard up saying like, oh, no, I can push harder, do this, do that. Like, you know, when I was younger, I did this or whatnot. And so then you kind of have to get them out of that pattern right. and that mindset yeah. to then dig deeper and be like, OK, so you've been in pain for how many years? Let's address that. Yeah. And then from that point, what's your daily habit? Or like, what are you lacking in yeah. your daily habits? And then we can kind of push them and like deter them through yeah. like what their normal patternings are. And a lot of, I think out of the clients that I've seen, I think I've sent over 50% of them to you guys. Really? Yeah. Not yeah, even kidding. Cool. Like, well, I appreciate the trust. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Cause I mean, I'm a long-term client yeah, exactly. <laughs> at this point. You don't want to be a long-term physical therapy client, but yes. I am, I'm there, but I'm like, it's helped me tremendously and I'm, active every day. So if, if right. it's helping me, obviously I trust you guys to help. Yeah. Everyone well, I appreciate else. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dr. Peter has been, yeah. he's, he's definitely, uh, we, we only wanted to bring on a players, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we could help people like that. Um, and it's interesting is like, uh, we had some, a mental health professional here. We had two of them Yeah. and I apply into the same mindset as that, as in like, Sometimes going to P, like physical therapy, right? Manual therapy, dry needling, tune ups, and exercise, like whatever, home, new homework, and layering new things. Mm. Not because it's like everything hurts, but because you're good and you want to stay good. Yeah. Sometimes that's okay. Yeah. It's like a management thing, but it's like if individuals that are high level, like you guys see, and we see, like they're always pushing themselves. Yeah. So they're always looking for like uh, management. So the roller coaster, as they really get after it, stays more steady. Yeah. Right. And it's cool when they build the trust with like both sides of that, because, you know, they can bring us information that you all like have shared with them in regards to what they're dealing with. And then we can provide also that like more multiple times a week that we see them, we can apply right. that to what their training protocol yeah. is. And I would imagine you, I mean, you see them a couple times a week, right? Yeah. <laughs> For an hour every time. Yeah. So there's like a, there's a relationship that builds there where people yeah. ultimately become more uh, uh, willing to be vulnerable and then share some things. And it's like, this is good because we're going to like tackle some stuff, yeah. you know? And then sometimes like the high level people, like you were saying, like, and I know from my, in my past, I, I appreciated it when somebody that I trusted was like, yo, let's, let's call it out right here. Like, yeah. we need to fix this, dude. You know, yeah. like, do you want to get better or not? The same trajectory that you're on, what does it look like in six months? Yeah. If you don't change anything, would yeah. you expect anything different? Totally. We have to, and we have to check this out and yeah. like change some stuff. And also you're working with people in such like an intimate level, like you're one-on-one yeah. -on -one with them literally right. for, yeah. for us, like we're one-on-one -on -one with them for an hour. And so do you, so are you guys, you're talking to them, like you're learning about every aspect of your life, of their life. Right. And so you also have to be like, you have to be mindful and careful of like the information that you're sharing with them, like what you're suggesting they do, because they do trust you at all of those points. Yeah, so you have to be part. like, you have to be like yeah. really, really sure of the information right. that you're sharing. And if you're not like, it's okay to outsource it right. to someone else. Like we yeah. have a team of, I think we're at 14 trainers right now that work awesome. with like work under, uh, under yeah. us. And I mean, we like Taylor's been great at being head trainer and he's like putting um, all of our younger trainers through seminars because like, you can go through the certifications, you can learn, you can read the book, we all can. Right. But if you can't apply it to like an actual situation with an actual person in front of you, like what good is is our service? So we're like very right. particular about making sure that all of our trainers are keeping up with all of their education. They're keeping up with all of the new information and like that we have a good open dialogue that if you have a question, you don't feel like you can't ask someone that's within, you know, your coworker. Right. Yeah, that's good. Um, and that's, that's awesome. Um, and the great thing too, like being sure of your knowledge or like the competency, mm -hmm. I know that we're really cool about you guys. Like if Taylor has a master's, you have a master's in nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. So y'all are like, yeah. you're educated. Yeah. So I was going to ask about that. Where'd you get, where's your master's degree? Where'd you go? Um, I went to Logan university okay. in St. Louis. So yeah. I was working full time and getting my master's degree. So I was actually, my master's, my master's degree is in nutrition and human performance. Okay. So it's a sports nutrition focus. I was working in the professional sports world while I was simultaneously getting this. So yeah, that's what were you working? I was working up in Port St. Lucie. I was working for Mike Barwis. Oh yeah. Yeah. The Barwis. He, yeah. yeah. They have a spot down in Deer Deerfield. Yeah. yeah. So right out of college, I worked for them for about almost a year and a half one of the best learning experiences, like I was put in so many different situations and like just had to like figure it out. I mean, obviously had people helping me and guiding me through it, but some of those situations, cause we worked in the professional sports 
world and that's like what he's known for but also there's right. another side of it that was called neurological reengineering so we worked with paraplegic and quadriplegic regaining mobility again so cool. learning from some of like the best of the best in these environments like you learned really quickly that you know a lot of the knowledge that you learned in school it's adaptable to both a professional athlete but also to someone who's been through like a traumatic injury right. and so I learned very quickly like okay this is this isn't just like walking into a gym, like teaching someone, you know, form on some of their reps of whatever we're trying to get them to do. It's like we're working with people at like such a different level. So I learned so much within the year and a half that I was with them, finished up my master's degree when I left that, which was probably end of 2018. I left there, finished my master's end of 2019, and I was living around here. So I kind of then segued on my own, figured it out, and then met Brandon and helped him open up the second location or his second location for One Fitness. So where was the first? It was downtown. It was a smaller person. Oh, so then they moved to the new one. Yeah. Park. So yeah. he was expanding from the smaller one. He had a couple of trainers that still kind of like came in rent space. Uh, it was a smaller facility and then moved down the street to the bigger one. We opened cool. That one, March 1st, 2020. Uh, yeah. <laughs> walked in yeah, there. It's tough. Yeah. Walked in there and it was, what, 17 days or something yeah. after. We didn't even have like mirrors up on the wall. Like we didn't even have all the equipment built out yet. Like we were just like doors open. People are coming in. Like, let's start running classes out of here. Boom. Pandemic. Yeah. Pandemic. <laughs> and we're like, oh my God. What, what a rough start, man. I didn't yeah. know that. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to having Brandon on yeah. here and we'll talk about a lot of stuff. Yeah. He, he's been through the ringer with this business, but how'd you, like, how'd you meet him through just the community? There was like yeah. a, um, they would bring trainers to do this. I forget what it was called, but they would bring trainers on to do this like week or monthly training session or class or whatever it was for the community it was free. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm not remembering it correctly, but I think the city like put it on cool. and so anyone could come and it was downtown. So we were both within that circle. And so, yeah, cross paths. Yeah. yeah. Mutual alignment. That's yeah. cool. So your master's was in uh, nutrition and human performance. Mm -hmm. And then when you graduated or part of that, you were working with Barwis mm -hmm. sports performance and human performance, yeah. neurological reeducation. Did they also have physical, like sports PT yeah. in there too? They had cool. everything. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, I know they're like very well known. You yeah. Know, like a lot of pro athletes and uh, pro uh, yeah. organizations. Very, and stuff. very attentive to detail, which was like, I was very, very lucky to be able to learn under Mike himself, but also his like head PT, uh, one of his head directors of one of the facilities. Like I was very, I was lucky to be that close to them because you're right. There's, that's cool. There's like 12 different segments of what they're, entire business is. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then, okay. So you mentioned with the nutrition stuff, right? Mm. You coach people through nutrition, walk, walk them through, which is really good, especially a lot. I mean, like that is the most important part of yeah. my opinion, but I'm yeah. sure you would agree. Yeah. Right? Like nutrition yeah. is like the king for, um, development of uh, like lifestyle, uh, changes that you want and like yeah. physique changes and health and wellness. But anyway, and then exercise can complement that. Yeah. Right. Um, mentioned protein heavy. Yeah. I definitely um, agree. Like, yeah. am I from what I've not come across? Um, tell me what you mean, like protein heavy, and why is it important? So, I just, I don't, I don't know if protein heavy is like the best way for us to describe it because I don't want okay. people to take that the wrong way. But okay. I just emphasize the need for protein. Okay. So, are all of the meals in, in for example, for the meal prep service that were that I started. I emphasize the need for protein for both men and women. And so the need for it to be a building block for our body, the need for us to achieve the physique that we want, but also for us to just maintain, you know, just like a, a level of satiation throughout the day. So yeah. I think a lot of people, we get, my, my approach to nutrition is always education versus like direction. So I'm not going to tell you, you have to eat this at this time unless it's totally necessary for, you know, it, it, for an athlete, it's a little bit different, but for the average person, I'm not going to say here, here's the meal plan, like on a this. piece of paper, follow mm -hmm. this and then come back to me in a couple of weeks. Like to me, that doesn't make sense. Like I have to teach them that you don't have to follow along with just one singular diet. You need to figure out what works for you. You need to figure out where your sources of food is coming from how to buy it and how to order it on your own. So I teach a lot of just the importance of understanding what you're eating. So the 
biggest thing that I find when I talk to people is that they don't eat enough protein. And I think that, you know, I just kind of relate that back to, I see some of my clients five times a week and, you know, as I'm seeing them for five hours a week, but what are you doing with the other, whatever that math is of all those hours that you're not in the gym with us? Like, how are you spending your time? Are you someone who is just not eating until dinner? And then you're coming back to us saying, oh, I'm not losing weight. I'm gaining weight. I'm retaining water or whatever it is. It's like, well, you have to take an approach that's going to work for your lifestyle that we can help you kind of time out when your meals are going to be so that everything you're doing in the gym will relate to how you want it to relate in your life. Right. You know, it'll be a good compound effect. Yeah. Um, so why the emphasis on protein? So the emphasis on protein, um, because I think that it helps to create that physique that a lot of people want. It's going to help build the muscle that we want. Everyone comes in saying they want that like toned look. Yeah. Well, the toned look is just a, a strong muscle. Yeah. Like, like low body fat percentage yeah. and a strong muscle underneath. Yeah. And so I think, um, well, the emphasis on protein is that it's going to keep you fuller longer. If we can time the protein properly over without overcompensating on, you know, the fats and the carbs that you're intaking, then your physique, like you just said, is like the low body fat, strong muscle. And over a longer period of time, it's going to be better for your bones, your joints, your muscles, your skin, like yeah. everything in your body needs this amino acid. Yeah. Yeah. The amino acid. Yeah. Um, totally. The, what I've heard is like, we were like, all right, we need more protein. Mm -hmm. And reading some of the research and stuff like that, like a high protein diet, which yeah. is like, you know, we're, we're getting up there. Yeah. Is like two grams per kilogram of body weight. Yeah. So that's going to be on their very high end. Which is high. Yeah. That's, that's like kind of hard for the which average person. Which is hard person. to do. <laughs> like I used to, when yeah. I was training hardcore, like in football and stuff, I was like, man, I need to get weight and get muscle yeah. mass on, right? So I need to yeah. crush protein. And for reference, like for people, a hundred kilograms of body weight is 220. Yeah. Down person, right? So if I'm 220, then I need to consume 200 grams of protein yeah. a day. Which is a lot. Like, and you get what, 40 grams in like a high protein meal? Yeah. Right? Let's yeah. Say, if you're 50. lucky, yeah. Let's say 50, just to make it yeah. even, right? That's four, four 50 gram meals a day. And imagine, which is hard. And imagine how many people don't even eat three meals a day. Right. So then you're just, then you're, then you're talking about supplementation. Yeah. Which, which is great. Great yeah. for the right person and with the right type of supplement supplements. Because right. at the end of the day, too, we could go on a whole tangent about the supplement market right now. Yeah. But talking about a high protein, I, I think it just, Honestly, it's like it catches people's attention that like a high protein diet is really just like there's protein in every single meal that you are consuming. My rule of thumb for the meal prep service is I want like 30 grams of protein on the minimum. Like that's our bare minimum for each meal that um, yeah. everyone's consuming. Yeah. Which is good. Like you yeah. said, things that I've read and you clarify, um, it makes you feel definitely more full. Yeah. Protein is, is the building block for muscle tissue for sure. And you need mm -hmm. enough to support growth and gains, mm -hmm. which if people want like more exposed muscle tissue and less body fat percentage. That's only yeah. going to help gain the muscle mass yeah. and then exercise on top of that or a lack of protein and you exercise, you're using your glycogen stores and that's eating the muscle yeah. after that. Cause you don't have the available calories to maintain and to build. Right. Yeah. Which and is like, which is like, I would imagine people are like, I'm not improving my muscle strength or mass like I think I would want yeah. to and I'm actually gaining weight it's like your your body's eating your muscle tissue yeah. and it's like you're finding Basically. you're stalemating yourself yeah where the press where the protein comes in yeah and also protein like like you just said like if your body starts to basically eat at its storage yeah. it's going you're gonna feel depleted yeah so if you're someone who's like you know you're going and you're working out really hard Say you have a normal nine to five job, you're coming, you know, you're not eating well, taking care of yourself. You're going to hit like that 2 p.m., 3 p.m. slump. Yeah. You're going to feel like, oh, my God, I need sugar. Or I need caffeine. You go for that. Then all of a sudden your blood sugar is going like this. Yeah. And so you go through those really, coaster. yeah, those really high highs, those really low lows. What protein does is it, ta it takes your body a little bit longer to metabolize. So that's why you feel fuller for a longer period of time. When you pair it with the proper type of carbohydrate, it's going to help to slow down the metabol the metabolism of the actual carbohydrate too, because your body's first focused on the protein. It's focused on the protein. So it's going to take, win. yeah. So then your metabolism yeah. is working yeah. and it's working a little bit harder than it normally would. Rather, if you just ate 
a strictly carb meal. Right. Like, you know, if you eat, you know, I'm not ta- talking badly about like pasta or pizza, but that's like a very high carb meal. Yeah, you I'm, go and I'm a pizza guy. Yeah. I, I mean, pizza. I, the I, Costco I, pizza, <laughs> man. So wherever we go, my kids are like, Okay. Yeah. I'm like, oh, let's go it's get like one. It's like the let's size of the table, too. Yeah. yeah. It's like, we'll get two slices. Yeah. yeah I'll make it three. Yeah. <laughs> and they and those are fine things to have in your diet. But when you eat that, like, how often an hour later are you like, oh, I could eat another one? Or yeah. like, oh, I could, like, I need something else. Yeah, totally. So if for someone who's, like, you know, looking for a certain physique or for someone who's trying to, like, make strides in whatever their fitness goals are, whether it be an athlete or the average person, you have to like, you have to focus on what you're putting in your body too, yeah, because your body works in crazy ways. And there's so many systems that are attributing to everything that we do on a daily basis. And the first thing your body is going to do is try to use up any energy that it possibly can, usually from your carb storage to give you the energy to work out, to right. reach all these things. Yeah. Most people are not the not a high performing athlete. So most people aren't going to get to that second and third energy system on a regular basis. So there needs to be some sort of balance when you're talking about diet. And also I just think there's a lot of false marketing and a lot of false information out there because not one singular diet is always going to be working for every single person. Or like problem solved, quick fix, I'll go keto. Yeah. Got it. Or I'll go vegan or I'll intermittent fasting. That's the, this whole time, that's yeah. the ticket. Yeah. And it's just like bouncing back and forth with these different like fad diets. Yeah. Which I mean, that works great for some people. Yeah. And I would have, from what messages I've heard from other uh, experts like yourself on nutrition is like, anything will work if you just like stick to it. Yeah. I also going think through like that emotional cycle of change of yeah. like, Ooh, that looks cool. Super easy, uninformed optimism. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a lot harder than I thought. And then they reach the Valley of despair and it sucks mm-hmm. way more harder than I thought it was. Then they leave next new thing, yeah. Guard, uh, un, uh, unknown optimism. And then they go to the same Valley and they just go back and forth. Yeah. And that's stick to it. Is and that- I think that's the same too for fitness. Like yeah, I think totally. it's going to be the same thing on both sides. It's like, we all want that quick fix. Yeah. I mean, it'd be so much easier. Like, if people assume that our my job and my colleagues' jobs and everything, and I'm probably sure some people who don't know what your job is would assume that you are just active and working out all day long and you're doing what you're telling and prescribing to your clients all day long. It's like, no, we're here as an expert to provide the information to go along with them. And if that were the case, if I were working out all day long, I would be ripped and would you know, my clients will be paying me so much money that I wouldn't even need a job to do that for them. But you're walking these people through, like you are a rock to them while they're going through these transitions. So you have to help them to create lifestyle habits that actually they're going to like, and they're going to stick through. That's why people consistency. Yeah. That's why people pick workouts that they like because they'll wake up and they'll be, you know, if someone likes to run, I would never tell someone not to run if they love to run yeah. because that's going to cause them to, to get it. up yeah. and do it. Less resistance yeah. and barrier to like entry of doing the thing. Yeah. If someone yeah. loves pizza, I would never yeah. be like, you can't eat pizza. It's like yeah. within reason, maybe don't have yeah. it for every meal every day. Yeah. Well, how can we layer this in? Make it yeah. like appropriate. Yeah. yeah. And then you're more excited when it's like time to yeah. like have it. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the 80, 20 rules would have heard a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that's good. I think people take that a little bit too literally sometimes, though. So I think that there's a little bit of like the 80-20 is a great concept because I think you can really adapt it to however you want to adapt it. But in my personal opinion, in me personally, like I can't go Monday through Friday, like super clean, like not do anything because and then go Saturday, Sunday, go like crazy because yeah. then coming back to Monday, I'm like, Oh, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And then you're a little bit of a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So to recap on that mm-hmm. protein emphasis is definitely important. Yeah. It's not metabolized well, which is a good thing because yeah. it makes your body work, your metabolism work pretty hard to digest it and to metabolize it. Yeah. Cool. It, it carries over into carbohydrates and fats also for metabolite. Cool. So your, your metabolism is working pretty hard. Yeah. 
And as you eat more and you exercise on top of that, it's allowing muscle growth to happen too. Yeah. And then once you have more muscle growth and size, that requires more tension also, which is going to make your metabolism run consistently harder again, which yeah. is a good win. Yeah. So you're like more thermic and just like burning thing. Your metabolism is running pretty yeah. intensely all the time. All the time. So yeah. the protein is a huge emphasis. Yeah. Huge is that emphasis. pretty accurate? Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Okay, cool. It's also, you said earlier too that uh, the two kilograms for protein, which yeah. is like super high. like Two grams per kilogram of body weight. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is like insane. Um Usually it's like 1.2 is okay. like a, is like a safe number that if someone, for someone who's like an active, adequate, yeah, like it's an adequate. And even when you start to do the math on that, you're like, okay, like, you know, it could be anywhere. It could be like 130 grams of protein per day for someone. And like, you start really yeah. peeling back saying, all right, I need to, so you might have to supplement. You might have to do some sort yeah, of like, need, I would imagine yeah. you would need to supplement for that. Yeah. Like a 30 to 40 gram protein shake at yeah. one point. And then you still have 90 more Three, yeah. protein yeah. Uh, events that happen in the day, yeah. which would be 90 more. That's 30 grams per other meal. Yeah. Breakfast is hard to get 30 grams because yeah, you're going to eat 20 eggs yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then you're like left with lunch and dinner. Yeah. So then you set, you uh, supplement, got that done. Afternoon snack, right? Yeah. Like a Greek yogurt and nuts or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Um, protein bar, maybe. Yeah. Protein shake. And then a emphasized protein meal at dinner. Yeah. Fish, chicken, ground turkey, ground beef. Yeah. Whatever. I um, that's yeah. I mean, it takes some planning. Yeah. Takes a it does. It takes some some planning and it takes some serious discipline. Yeah. Like it's not to say you can't eat things that are good for you. You just have to be very conscious of like just mindful. Mindful right. and also just my I'm really big on the quality of ingredients too because that's a theme we're hearing a lot. Yeah, because I think I mean, I think, especially in the United States, we do a really good job at marketing to appease the masses. And I think that there's a lot of false marketing in terms of what we're consuming. Like, like misrepresentations. Yeah, yeah. And saying like, you know, you go into, you could go into Whole Foods right now and you could walk down, there's an, a full aisle just of protein bars or like at least half of an aisle of just protein bars or they're marketed as a protein bar. And you look at it and, and the bar itself might be like this big and have... I don't know, only four grams of protein, yeah. but like yeah. 20 grams of sugar. Yeah. And like when you start to really read the back of them, yeah, it probably looks like it's healthy because it's like all these clean, neutral colors that says like whatever, protein yeah. this or vegan that. But right. you look at it and it's like, that's not going to, that's not going to be sufficient enough. Yeah, totally. You got to really start looking and, and thinking about, I'm really big on the added sugar because I love sugar. Like I, I could, that is my thing. That's my vice. And so I, what's your thing? What chocolate or what? Chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate. Oh yeah. I'm a chocolate guy. Yeah. Reese's yeah. like you give me anything Reese's. Reese's. Oh, I am like, you so won't the, be over the Reese's Easter eggs coming yeah. out. So. Yeah. I mean like I can't <laughs> buy it. Like I have to buy like the little one and I'm like, okay. Cause I'll eat it. We'll bring a bag of those Reese's eggs yeah. for a come up maybe Mar yeah, March. To, yeah. to your guys' gym. And I take all of them. I take I take the business card off and I put them around it. And I'm like, take the business cards, but I'm going to take the candy. candy. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's those so are, funny. those are my. Those are good. Yeah. There's like extra peanut butter in those. Those ones are the, the really, the, um, what are they called? The big cup. Yeah. The big yeah, cups. I the mean, deep or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I could okay, eat. Reese's. Yeah. Got I could it. eat that. But those to me are like, those are bad. Those are bad news just because I could eat. I don't have like a, any sort of self-control over that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a big stickler on just pay, paying attention to added sugars and things that I eat on a daily basis. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you really start to look at it and you're like, oh, my God, it's in like literally almost everything I eat. And, right. and you have, I mean, you have young, your daughter's young, right? She's three and a half. Yeah. So and like. Son's a year and a half. Yeah. Almost two. So like starting to think about things that they're eating and you just start looking on the back of it. Like I have a couple, yeah. uh, two nephews and a niece and I tell my sister, I'm like, just read the back and just look at how much sugar yeah. they're consuming. Cause like they're kids, you want to let them live their life. But right. like, also this is the way that the world that we live in right now is just, it's unfortunate that that's, yeah. that's where we're at. We were pretty, there was a moment we were, we were having dinner or a snack or something like that. It was like late. And my daughter was like, I want to snack. I'm hungry. I'm like, what would be good right now? What do you want? She's like, corn. <laughs> I was like, awesome. Oh, yeah. You're like, I got so it. So my kids eat, cause we eat like for time efficiency, right? Yeah. I'm a big time guy. And Costco is definitely a great route to oh, go for that. 100%. Just 
but uh, we'll get like the frozen vegetables, like yeah. the frozen peas, corn, or like frozen broccoli and green beans or whatever. Just get a handful of microwave them, boom, you got steamed vegetables. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah. Um, but they'll eat them frozen. Do they really? Yeah. We'll just pour like <laughs> peas and corn, like in their little plates, you know, and they'll just eat frozen peas and corn. And really? uh, yeah. it's a challenge. And they, they like it, you know, because it's like cool and cold, you know, yeah. a good texture versus like a steamed, like warm, mushy. Yeah, like mushy. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't always smell great. I don't know. Yeah. But it's a different avenue and they like, they like it. They're yeah. cool with it. You're yeah. like, all right, this is like, your, this, this is, is your ice cream. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or we'll do like a puree yeah. of like frozen vegetables and some fruit and stuff. Yeah. And then we have like these molds that you put in the freezer and we'll pour the puree. In yeah. There. Do like a little popsicle yeah. with it. Yeah. Pour a popsicle and they're eating like vegetables. They're like, oh, yeah. I want a popsicle. But You're like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. You can have one. Yep, you can have all good. of them. <laughs> Pre-dinner snack. Sounds good. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, that's awesome. So that was, that was like really cool. I'm like, I really hope that we can shepherd them into like that kind of expectation. Yeah. Which is my next question for you. Okay. Mm. Let's say you have a client coming in and wants to work with you, right? And they're yeah. like, you know, I really want to change this. I've been kind of stalemating with my physique and my fitness. I don't feel great. I want to get stronger. I want to revamp all that stuff. Cool. Yeah. Going into that conversation, what would you convey to them as the expectations on this journey? For fitness, yeah. diet, nutrition, yeah, all that stuff, lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, that's honestly like a common request that we get for okay. anyone that comes in. Like I want to change my entire life. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well I can help you with a fraction of it. But first things first, I mean, obviously numbers don't lie. So it's easy for us to look at a scale. That wouldn't be like my best advice for someone to be fixated on the number on the scale. So I would right. just take them to a point of like, okay, what do you, what are our limitations in your, in your day to day? So is it, you don't have time to work out. How can we make each workout that you have most efficient for you? And what is, what are your eating habits? So I would take them probably like a week or two that I would just kind of chat with them about like, Hey, what's going on in your life? Like how, what are you, what are you eating? Don't lie to me. So yeah. <laughs> just tell me I'm not going to judge you kind of yeah. thing and start at that point. And then, you know, I would, I would suggest, and maybe I'm a little more biased, but I would suggest for most people that some sort of strength training is going to be wildly beneficial to them. hundred percent. It doesn't mean that you're going to bulk up. It's actually pretty hard to bulk up. Yeah. Um, Especially for females. Yeah, it's so it, yeah, it's really hard. But I would do that, mix it in with some sort of like cardio, hit style, something just to appease the, you know, heart rate and all of that. But mm -hmm. I would highly suggest that they, on the days that they're not seeing us, I would suggest going for a walk, going for a bike ride, doing something active, but that's also kind of like a recovery. Yeah. And then it's still active. It's still active. It's still, you're not going for a 20 mile run, but like just you're moving and grooving. Yeah. And just get out and like get into the habit of exercising or moving on a almost daily basis, because then your body is going to get into that habit. I would check in on their sleep habits. Like, you know, do you actually sleep or do you think you sleep? Like when you wake up, um, and then I would kind of go into the nutrition with them and say, what's let's peel back. Like, are you eating out a lot? Are you drinking? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have kids? Do you drink a lot of coffee? You know, there's so many questions that you can start with and just like take it piece by piece. But if I were, you know, only had one session with someone and they had to have some sort of takeaway, mine would be small, tangible changes is like increase your movement, whatever type of movement you like with whatever amount of time you have, increase your water intake and try to eat as many whole foods as you can. And those would be like my three most tangible takeaways for anyone that's coming in to gotcha. like. Gotcha. And if somebody wants like that, like change my whole life, right? Yeah. Which is great. Cool. Yeah. And the enthusiasm's there to make sure that there's not like a flash of intensity and enthusiasm that just drops over time. Mm -hmm. What do you usually convey to them for like expectations of timeline? Yeah. I mean, that's always a hard one because people are going to come in with like some, like I need to lose 10 pounds in a month. And you're like, uh, my next question is why 10? Like what's what, why are you fixated on that number and why in a month? Mm -hmm. And so I That's think, a question. yeah. And because I think people just pick numbers and then half the time don't even know why or if that's a, possible for them to do. So if there's some sort of, you know, like I want this to happen in this amount of time, I always try to try to convey to them, this is like a lifestyle change. This isn't something, if you want me to get you down to X pounds in this amount of time, you're going to hate me, but we can do it. Yeah. It's not going to be the healthiest way you can do it. You're going to hate me, 
But if you want this to be a lifestyle change, I would suggest that we make smaller goals leading up to that. So maybe the smaller goal is maybe it is something on the scale for them to just have that little bit of, you know, the quantitative. Yeah. Number, yeah, yeah. And like a mo- little bit of a motivation, like, oh, this actually is working. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's something like, hey, why don't you try to get into the gym four times this week? Try and do one day on your own and start making little attainable goals that they can say, oh, my gosh, I drank the the 100 ounces of water you told me to drink every day last week. I felt amazing. Or I slept for eight hours every single night. I feel amazing. Or I was able to do, you know, little things that maybe don't have to be so fixated on how someone looks or it's more so how they feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's interesting. I, one thing I heard recently that makes, I was like, that makes a lot of sense Yeah, is focusing on like the, the success or failure, mm-hmm. the 10 pounds or not, isn't, well, that's not the way, the, the scale of success or failure. The scale yeah. of success or failure is like, we wanted you to work out four days a week and then drink this water, like you yeah. said, and then not eat out, but maybe once a week instead of five times a week. Yeah. Did you do those things? Cool. Yeah. That's the win. Yeah. And the ultimate win is. What's the likelihood that um, that's a- achievable and attain like just and, and being consistent yeah. over the next like eight years? Yeah. Versus like, cool, we lost your eight, 10 pounds. What's the chances of you gaining it back yeah. in two weeks or something? You know, like next time I see you in six weeks, you want to lose another 10 pounds? It's yeah. the same. You're like just doing this over and over again, hitting the ceiling. Yeah. So anyway, I, I would imagine then like those conversations you're mm-hmm. having where it's like, cool, 10 pounds, I'll get you there. You're going to hate me. Yeah. We'll do it. Yeah. But what's the likelihood you're going to get it back again and, t- and what just afterwards? Yeah. Because we didn't change the style, the lifestyle habits that caught us in the first place. Right. You're, we just changed how much you're doing when you come into the gym. Right. Exactly. Kind of. yeah. And also, I think, too, a lot of times if you can figure out or like coming from our position, like if you can, if I can figure out what their motivator is, mm, mm-hmm. like if they are, you know, they're nervous about their health or they just had a, a lot of my clients either are not a lot of them, a good majority of them are. Um, have young children have just had a child or are pregnant. Yeah. So I'm, that's very challenging. Yeah. And so I'm now dealing with, that's a whole nother mental game. I've never had children. I've never experienced that, but like, that's a whole nother game that we're into. And you have to like really dig deep and, and be like, okay, you now have a baby to take care of. Like you, there, your motivation is now let me be the best possible person I can for my family. Right. And so finding different motivators other than something on a scale and granted, so many people are going to step on a scale and they're going to look at their weight and they're going to come to me and say, I didn't lose any weight yeah. and say, do you feel better? Do you feel stronger? Do you have more energy? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, that's usually like per- what happens when you start strength training, like your body fat percentage is probably down. Your muscle mass is probably up. That's awesome. Well, yeah. That's the win. Yeah. Right? I'm sure you were like, you're not like the weight change is not because it's not the success or failure yeah. because you're cool. Your drop body fat percentage, your muscle mass is getting bigger and that weighs more than fat, of course. So like the weight change won't be that much, Yeah. but like your physique will. Yeah. Or even just when you come into the gym and you can lift more. Yeah. Like that's a massive success. Or you can come into the gym and you leave your workout not feeling totally depleted and also not in pain. Yeah. Like you're sore because it was a hard workout, but you're not leaving like, oh my gosh, I have to go get a massage after everything. Like those are massive wins. And I think people are just super fixated on like some, not always, but sometimes on the wrong thing. Yeah. So, so then you try to have a conversation with them Yeah. and find out like, what's, what's your underlying motivation? Mm -hmm. What's your why? Why do you want to lose 10 pounds? Why do you even want to consider this stuff in the first place Yeah. versus like maybe six months ago? Like what changed or what, like why? Yeah. Cause if you can figure out that, then you can also just direct them in the right way. Like maybe I'm not the right fit for them. Like maybe my style of training isn't, isn't what they need and that's fine. That's why you have to like have those conversations. But also coming from someone like when I I was a competitive gymnast for 10 years. So yeah. So like intense environments and like a lot of, a lot of things were fixated on your performance. So I get Mm -hmm. the idea of like having to achieve this certain thing and your, and your body essentially having to be able to do this certain thing. So I think I learned from my early young, young years of gymnastics with super intense rushing coaches that 
Yeah, it was scary. Um, that there are other factors that uh, that are going to play into how you're performing or, or whatever. So that's why I always try to ask the why, because it'd be super easy for me to be like, yeah, sure, you can lose 10 pounds. We can do that. No problem. And then never follow through it with them. Right. So I think for me, that's just something like I would want someone to ask me if I walked in and said, I need to lose some 10 pounds. I know I keep saying 10 pounds, but yeah. that's just like it's a common one. Really common. Yeah. If so, I would want someone to be like, why? Yeah. Because then I would have to think about it and be like, I actually don't know. Yeah. I just want to feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Getting a little more, I mean, if you're comfortable with it, yeah. what's, what's your why? My why for what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Nutrition. Yeah. Wealthy Aaron. Yeah. And your own fitness and stuff. Yeah. So, like I said, I was a competitive gymnast for since I was three years old till I was about 13 um, was really intense growing up. I had a very sportive family. My, all my siblings played soccer and they were all really good. And I was like, I'm going to be a gymnast. Went right from gymnastics into competitive cheerleading. And when I got into high school, I was a pole vaulter. Okay. And so when I was in high school, you know, those are like all very random, but like intense sports, never, never fully on a team until I was, um, in cheerleading. But, Pole vaulting was a very interesting sport because it is very technical and it's one of the only sports that you have to be weighed in every single time that you show up to a meet. You have to be weighed in because the pole that you use, the fiberglass pole, yeah. is weighted. Okay. So if I was, I don't even remember how much I was in high school, but say I was 120 pounds, I could only use a pole that was 120 pounds or above. So like you can never be over the weight of what the pole was weighted for, yet a lighter weight pole bends more. So you could get up and over, whatever. So right. I got really fixated myself on how much I weighed that I was falling into really like unhealthy habits as a high schooler. So I was not performing well. I was like basically not eating. And then I would eat right, right before I was supposed to compete. I was just not, didn't have my healthy habits. Didn't really realize it. Luckily, it wasn't anything more serious like some people can have, but that kind of threw me into like a tizzy when it got, when I got to college and I wasn't doing sports and I gained weight in college and I didn't really know like how am I supposed to be active as an athlete my whole life with but with no one telling me what to do. Right. So then I kind of got into my own like research about you know going back and forth about how important exercise is and that I don't you know, I, I have to come up with some sort of routine, some sort of like discipline that's going to help me to maintain my mental, but also my physical health. And then I was got really interested in the thought of studying nutrition. And so I was, I think, sophomore, junior year of college, I thought about adding on, I thought about adding on a nutrition part, like I guess minor or major, I forget what it was, but it, it would have thrown me off on my trajectory of graduating. When I got to college, I was like, I'm going to be a physical therapist. Like I'm going to go and I'm going to just do that. I was like, That's I'm going to do what I know. Like I had been yeah. around physical therapists. I'd been around chiropractors. I'd been around like medical people in the medical field. And that just seemed like what I wanted to do. But then I got really excited about nutrition. Anyway, I graduated college, worked under a physical therapist and he was just like, look, you can go back to PT school. He's like, you're not going to like it though. Like you're, you keep talking about nutrition. Like you're passionate about this. Like go back and like, if you're going to spend the money, you're going to spend the time, like go back and do that. Right. So that's cool. I think a lot of my childhood kind of segued me into this because as a, as a child, I experienced a lot of these like kind of thoughts of, of how your body has to look and how your body has to feel, but I never really understood it. And now I'm really passionate about helping people figure out like their own way of, of how they should be feeling. Right. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, where, where'd you go to high school? I like, grew up, I grew up in Philadelphia or outside of Philadelphia. In Philly. Yeah. Bucks County. Okay. Went to Council Rock. Which okay. Is, uh, yeah. Are you an Eagles fan or yeah. Flyers? Eagles, Flyers. Eagles had a rough one. It, yeah. If you live in the surrounding area of Philadelphia and you're not a Philadelphia fan, like, 
you you're, need you're shunned. Like you're in, yeah. you're like not safe. <laughs> yeah, you're legitimately not safe. Yeah. <laughs> it is one of the most like powerful fan bases. And I went to college at Alabama. So we oh, also did. Yeah. That's that's cool. So we also have that whole like yeah. Crimson Tide is also a very strong yeah. fan base. Yeah, yeah. They uh how do you feel about Nick Saban uh retiring? I mean, he's he's phenomenal. He's but the goat. yeah, he's the GOAT. Like yeah. that I mean, the program was built obviously by Bear Bryant, all these other amazing influential coaches, but like just let him retire and like let him live. Like it'll the program will live on. Yeah, yeah. He deserves it. Yeah. Like he's done enough. Yeah. You know, like he's done well, like he's super respectable. Like he's the goat, you know. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah, I, they let him uh, let him go. You know? Yeah, he'll he'll be, he'll be back. Like he'll be he'll be hanging out at the games. Yeah. There's no way that he's not going to be around. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. Yeah. So okay, so outside of Philly, uh, college at the Crimson Tide, yeah. Bama, Roll, Roll Tide, Roll Tide. Um, did you do you follow Roll Tide Willie on Instagram? No, I almost said he's just, yeah, like, he's really funny. <laughs> yeah. It's probably all true. Whatever you're about, whatever he, whatever he's posting, it's probably true. <laughs> I mean, Roll Tide Willie, like yeah, you know it's going to be yeah. awesome. Um, interesting. Okay. Before we go, last thing yeah. you mentioned getting, getting bulky. Right? Yeah. Okay. I hear that all the time too. From women, right? From well, of course yeah. women, right? Like, well, I don't want to lift weights cause I don't yeah. like, I don't want to get like too muscular. I'm like, dude, Yeah. it's hard to get, you, you know how hard you have to train to get muscular. And I'm like, I try to convey it like this, right? Yeah. What is the ultimate goal for any bro in college? To get muscular get and get swollen, and get jacked, <laughs> right? Yeah. And they work out very hard, and oftentimes it's still hard for them. Yeah. Do they have more or less testosterone than most women? Of course, a lot more. Dudes yeah. have way more, and that's built for muscle growth. Yeah. And they're still having challenges getting there with a person like yourself who's a female, has mm-hmm. less testosterone, who's not going to lift as heavy as like they are. Yeah. You think you're going to outweigh them or outgain them in muscle mass? No. Of course not. It's not working like that, right? No. But anyway, what, so what do you say? Like, how do you convey that? I mean... Just say, like you're I, not gonna get bulky. <laughs> just trust me. Yeah, I'm like you're not gonna get bulky. Um, um, I'm more so if someone's super skeptical about that going into it, I'm like, all right, then just try strength training twice a week, and then do cardio, do Pilates, do yoga, do whatever you want on those other days. I will guarantee you that in a couple of weeks, you're gonna feel the best after you do strength training workouts. You're gonna look the best you've ever looked. You're gonna feel the best you've ever looked, and you're gonna realize that you are not bulky, but you are toned. Yeah, right. right. Like that is the that is the end goal, but. I, I mean, it's a common, yeah. it's a common concern for a lot of women. But right. like you said, it's like so hard to get bulky. Yeah. Like it's so hard. Like the, And I would imagine <laughs> the women that we would see on like fitness competitions right, yeah. that are like, that would look what they would probably not see desirable in their, in those demographics minds of like bulky. Yeah. Like the, they're training extremely hard. Yeah. And they're oftentimes taking some stuff supplements. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's PEDs involved or not, but like they're very involved with that to get like that for a female. It's very hard. So yeah. like, you'll be good. Right. Like, yeah. It's also like genetics too. Like true, genetics yeah. are going to play a, a well, massive role in a lot of the things, but like genetics too, if you're someone who tends to gain muscle fast, then we can work with that. Of course, if correct. You're, yeah. yeah. If you're someone who doesn't gain muscle very fast or very easily, we can also work with that, yeah. but like yeah. you have, there, there has to be some sort of it. And one thing that I always do tell people too, is I'm, I'm very adamant about this being like a lifestyle change and, and something that kind of lands well is as we get older, we need to continue to strength train because your balance is going to go, your joints and muscles and everything is going to start to for lack of better what better word is wither away yeah. and if you can maintain some sort of resistance training in your daily or weekly routine like those things are only going to help you as you age yeah totally i would 100 yeah. agree with that like yeah. bone, bone mineral density in women for osteoporosis osteopenia yeah. is first um and arthritis and arthritic changes like yeah. it's really healthy i did a podcast on like the benefits of strength training yeah and how it actually improves and fortifies joint and articular services of your yeah. joint, which is cartilage which is crazy yeah um and then like atrophy in the muscle tissue and resiliency for like muscle muscles and tendons and stuff to tolerate random things like lifting a suitcase at the airport yeah and all of a sudden or walking turn. like up and down stairs or yeah. like how many and i mean this is such a sad thing to think but like how often is it that you've heard that someone has fallen down their stairs, they've fallen yeah. or something and they've broken their hip. It's yeah, like, totally. 
that, that it's a, doesn't. It's a huge bummer. Yeah, but. that is a huge bummer. But yeah. I think all of those things just factor into like the things that you choose to do as mm-hmm. in your younger years. Right. You, the building habits now yeah. carries over for longevity till you're like 75, 80. Like, yeah. They may be able to do that then to maintain the same lifestyle habits. And then when you get there, the likelihood and risk ratio is definitely decreased mm-hmm. of like likelihood of falling or not being able to yeah. take care of yourself. Um, and then bone mineral density, muscle density and resilience. Um, yeah, totally balance. Yeah. And also the, the, the cognitive, yeah, cognitive yeah. the cognitive clarity for sure. I think also just like your fit, like how you feel after you do something like a workout that was challenging when you're done, you're like, wow, I can do that. Like yeah. you have those endorphins when you leave that you're like, all right, like, yeah. I feel good. I did something good for myself yeah, today. Totally. So there's, there's a, there's a domino effect for yeah, sure. Totally. I totally agree. That's yeah. awesome. Um, cool. Well, th- I appreciate you coming in yeah, and sharing your story and your back, your background and stuff and some of your insights and knowledge. We'll definitely have you on again and we'll, yeah. we'll collaborate on some stuff. Um, real quick, if people want to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to reach you? Um, on Instagram at wealthy Aaron, it's W E L L T H Y E R I N. Um, there is my email, my phone number, everything. If they want to, yeah. So yeah. Instagram is the best way or DM or something. Yeah. DM, okay. email, call, whatever. Cool. And then one Someone will answer. On one fitness Belvedere. is, yeah, we're on Belvedere and Dixie. Our Instagram is one, number one fitness. Cool. Same thing. You awesome. can reach out to us there. Well, we'll thanks. Try. Yeah. Like, thanks for coming in. If yeah. Y'all, we're always open to questions, suggestions, and, and things to talk about and topics and things. So I'm always open to that stuff. So definitely reach out. And the best way to reach us, if you have any questions or pain or anything or topics you want to hear about in the podcast and stuff, um, Athlete Restoration Co. is our Instagram. And then w, uh, w.athleterestorationcompany.com is our website. Or you can email us at team at athleterc.com. But thanks for, thanks for coming in again. Yeah, thank you. And we'll catch y'all next time. Hey, hold up. As you know, we're a small local practice and we don't run any ads or sell anything on this podcast, but it would mean the world if you could share, write a post or word of mouth recommendation for somebody just like you that's athletic and active that wants to live their dynamic lifestyle and pay some good karma and pay it forward to somebody else just like you. And who knows, you could change their world and a 10 second review could be that avenue.